What's up there YouTubers and fellow riders? <clears throat> doing a little something special today for you guys. Uh, doing a video log actually, or a vlog, however you want to call it, on uh, the importance of a, of a voltmeter and uh, what it could do for you. Now, I installed a voltmeter here on my, on my bike because I was having a couple of issues with uh, some dead batteries and I wanted to kind of see where it was, uh, where it was occurring at. And um, many people just think that you know the voltmeter is just for you know just showing you uh, how much juice is left in the battery, and uh, that's actually not so. It's it's helpful on very many levels. Just besides that, and um, I kind of want to show you right now. So I haven't even started the bike right now for one, and this is just a quick indication. Uh, I made myself a custom panel right here um, to hold my voltmeter and um, my switches and whatnot for my uh, my fog lamps and my uh, the power button for the voltmeter. So right now with the key off and not nothing going on, I instantly know how much power I have left in or juice left in my tank. Now you gotta remember I'm I got my my neon lights going on or my LED lights, and uh, if I shut those off right now, let's see what this voltage drops down to. Okay. Hardly any juice is being sucked up by those uh, LED lights, maybe one volt. So that kind of lets you know right there off the bat, not even starting the bike, what I'm in for or in store for the day. So as you can see, I got the whole bike all lit up, including underneath here. And um, as you can see, my LED or my uh, fog lamps, This is the, the, these are the, the U7 fog lamps uh, with the three modes, high, uh, medium, or low beam and the flasher kit and it's also got the um, LED ring which I don't have hooked up right now I'll probably add another switch to that just so I can get these to go with the uh, with the red eye so right off the bat right now having not even having to start the bike I know I got 12.2 volts and I'm good to go right now um, had had an issue the other morning where bike didn't start at all and uh, it was a dead battery so I'm going to roll this out real quick and uh, start it off out here so I don't wake up the neighbors. But uh, okay, so with the bike started, it's going through its warm up and uh, you can see those, uh, the voltage rising and that's the warm up. That's your, uh, your fast idle kicking in for warm up and uh, which lets me know a couple things. One, my, my STVA valve. Uh, is working bikes idling up and it's uh, or warming up and it's going through that procedure so that's another thing that thing that that voltmeter just told me right off the bat I mean technically you can hear you know hear it go up the idle raise up and then drop down but this lets actually lets me know that um, that it's working and uh, and that the uh, the rectifier and the stator are working properly as well um, just with that alone right there so as you can see it not, not only did not just tell me how much battery or juice I had left in the battery but it also identified other, other things other electrical things that are working in the um, in the electrical system so that's my um, stator kicking in that's letting me know my charging system is is working now the, another thing is gonna let you know is if you ride like me and you have all these uh, lights and whatnot kicking on, um, it's going to keep an eye on, or you're able to keep an eye on how much juice you're sucking out and uh, when you should actually turn those off. Because if you're sitting here, let's say you're sitting at a light or sitting here like I am, um, and this meter is reading under, you know, under 12 volts, um, you know, hey, it's time to shut some shit off so that uh, my battery can charge um, and uh, we'll show you that in a, little, in a minute so here are my fog lamps and the power is on but the reason why it doesn't come on is because I actually have them hooked up to my HID kit on on the um, high beam side so because my high beam is not on at the moment that hasn't gone on now this is something I hooked up so that I didn't have to keep pushing buttons up here um, 
I could just actually just use this thumb switch to to cycle through the three the three modes of the fog lamp, which is again that high, medium, and flash. So right now I'm gonna kick this on, and uh, for those of you who were curious about uh, how bright these lights were, this is my normal driving light, which is the uh, the main the main driving light, not the high beam. So this is the fog lamps on high, and you're gonna see them out there project into that tree. I'm not sure if you can quite see that, but I'm hitting that tree out there. That tree up in this general area right here. And, um, you know, it would be better at night, but uh, fortunately I can't do that for you just yet. So again, this is how I cycle through. This is gonna be my low beam. And then this is gonna be my flashers. See that up in that tree? If you can see that flashing, I'm not quite sure. And then I just cycle through again. Now, the convenience of having it here as opposed to anywhere else, I kind of like that because I hate taking my hands off the, you know, the bars just to flip around with some switches. That's kind of dangerous, you know. So, right now I'm riding with my high beam on. And you can see, or actually all, since I have two uh, projector bulbs down there, two fog lamps, I have my high beams going and I have my low beam going all at once and you can see how much voltage is being dropped out of this out of my electrical system right there so if you're sitting at aisle for a long time or if you are constantly uh, running from light to light to light you can see how much battery or how much voltage is actually draining so uh, for those of you who are curious about the voltage there you go um, so I'm gonna take this off the high beam and um, let's see what it does 11.8, 11.9, .8, still flipping around there. What does the flashers get us? 11.8, so still the same thing. So, right now I don't need them. I, I technically only put them on when, um, when I hit some type of sort of traffic. So, and uh, that's when they really come in handy for me. Um, so you can see right now that just with this right here that my electrical charging system is actually working okay because I have mine directly connected up to the battery and uh, I ran a power distribution block to run other things going straight to the battery so that if I wanted to hook up uh, some other little goodies or whatnot I could but right here as we're cruising along this pretty much tells me that my stator is working. Well, the fact that my battery is, uh, my bike is running, that my rectifier is working is one thing. But sometimes the rectifier doesn't work the way it's supposed to, and uh, you get that either too much charge, too little charge, or it's just gonna kill the shit out of your battery, and uh, you know, no charge at all, and you're basically running on battery power. But as you can see right there. Uh, this little one little device has told me many things about my motorcycle before I even got onto the street or got into you know into my morning ride going to work because that's where I'm going right now I'm heading to work it's about 6 a.m. right now so um, if you're interested in purchasing one of those I'll probably put a link up in the descriptions so you can get one but basically you can pretty much get them off of eBay, they're like a couple bucks. Um, I ordered, uh, I think I ordered like four or five, and they come in various colors. Um, I know right now you can't really see, but it has this little bezel that goes around the, and a socket that you know you just when you make a cutout, it kind of just snaps into place if you cut out the proper hole size. But um, I'm also thinking about making some of these. Uh, panel holders for our bikes I don't know let, let me know uh, give me some feedback on that and let me know if you guys would be interested in uh, having your own having your own panel um, so switch panel um, I got a 3d printer and uh, I could actually 3d print this out the problem is with this is I have the uh, double bubble right here and um, I don't have the OEM one and so right now this is you know specifically designed for the double bubble um, 
and there's basically no screws involved um, it's actually the bottom part is actually wedged into the cluster and um, I used a, a piece of velcro velcro tape right here with the uh, soft uh, with the softer side of the velcro facing right here and uh, to hold it in place uh, it comes out really easy in case you need to you know add another switch or you know make some type of modification but the um, I don't actually have the pattern for the uh, for the OEM and um, this is specifically for the those of you who have the double bubble now um, I believe that everything should still be the same as far as the uh, alignment goes if you do purchase one from me um, you would just have to shave it down more I think the because of the I've, since I've never had the, the OEM one I think it pretty much sits right, for right here and even though this sits so far deep you'd never know the difference but you could actually shave it you know shave the plastic down and, and do it on your own so it's kind of be like a, a general all-purpose type of thing uh, piece for for those of you uh, who are interested in one but um, I can't get a clear shot I'm not sure if you can see that mine is made out of plexiglass of course I just went a different route but uh, I can't transfer it over to a, a CAD file and uh, 3d print it so if you're interested you know go ahead and um, go ahead and post it up and maybe uh, I'll get into designing that and uh, making one for you guys I've seen a lot of guys who uh, post up uh, who put their switches in their uh, air vents right here you know they cut out little holes uh, that's kind of a hassle I really don't want to cut a hole into that you know maybe if I had like a couple of hundred switches and I needed some more room yeah but uh, for the most part you can achieve the same with just this and uh, uh, you could probably get about maybe depending on the sizes of your switches you could probably get maybe uh, one, two, three, four, maybe about five switches I don't know why you would need more than five switches on there but um, yeah you could probably do that so um, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video um, if you did go ahead and hit the like button if you want to leave me a comment go ahead and drop me one below and uh, let me know what you think about adding uh, a voltmeter to your bike and uh, as you can see it helps me out a great deal I, I need to know what's going on with my bike all the time especially when it's concerned with electrical and uh, let me know if you think that that's important to you as well I think these bikes should have came with one in the first place that in a and a fucking better gas gauge indicator to let me know that's a you know a level some type of level maybe I'll learn how to do one of, uh, have a fab one of those for these bikes as well but um yeah I hope this helped helped you out and uh and again uh, as always see you next problem